the man is an invincible existence on Blue Star. Not only has he mastered the strongest escape skill, Void Walking, but he has also awakened a unique time-related ability. Not just that, his cat-eared girl possesses the power to change fate and predict the future. Every time he faces danger, Rice always helps him turn misfortune into blessing. But now, there's an opponent he can't defeat, who wants to take Rice away from him. However, Rice foresaw this crisis a year ago, and used her powers to alter the course of a spatial temporal energy, directing it to Blue Star a year later. In two or three days, this energy will arrive, and by then, Chen Luo will have the power to slay gods. To ensure he can catch this wave of fortune, Rice quickly said falsely, I'm willing to go with you, but I need to stay here a few more days, to say a proper goodbye to my friends. Also, he's my best friend here, perhaps you could spare some time these days to guide him. Hearing this, Isman agreed without a second thought, eager to build a good relationship with Rice, considering such a small request as nothing. Back at the base, Isman immediately declared that she didn't want anyone disturbing her and Lord Rice, demanding everyone to leave. Chen Luo, without delay, handed Barrow over to Mi Ling and others, for a thorough interrogation. Isman barely glanced at the others, except for Congealed Frost, who caught her eye. She muttered, Lucky girl, you found my eye soul pearl. This was precisely why Congealed Frost didn't suffer during her advancement. Unlike other marine creatures who consumed Auburn's flesh, Congealed Frost had consumed the ice soul pearl that fell from Isman. Then Isman said solemnly, Since Lord Rice asked me to guide you, ask me anything you want to know. Chen Luo immediately asked her, Do you know why our planet turned out like this? Isman laughed softly, It's because Auburn died on Blue Star. His flesh and the dark power within contaminated this planet. Ironically, I feel a bit sorry. I killed him, but inadvertently harmed the life on this planet. Despite her words of apology, she showed no genuine remorse. Chen Luo then asked, Why did you kill Auburn? At this, Isman's expression turned icy, because he deserved to die. Back when I was at the demigod level, Auburn, to test his dark abilities, brutally killed all life on my mother planet. I was the only one who escaped that disaster. Later, I grew to the divine level. Do you think I shouldn't have killed him? And that divine armor of Auburn should be with you now. Don't try to lie to me. Weigh your words before you do. I can sense that besides you, there are a few others who carry a hint of Auburn's aura. Hand over that divine armor. You're not worthy of such a treasure. Besides, you can't unleash its true power. Keeping it will only bring you disaster. You can keep the sword for self-defense. I have no use for a dark weapon. Isman's eyes held an undeniable firmness. If Jin Luo dared any tricks, Isman might turn hostile on the spot. Seeing this, Rice quickly suggested to give it to her. Hearing this, Chen Luo immediately took out the divine armor from his spatial ability and handed it over to Isman. After storing the divine armor in her space ring, Isman took out a crystal. This thing is of no use to me now. You're quite honest, kid. This fire element demigod level crystal is yours now. Don't want Rice to think I'm taking advantage of you. Indeed, a crystal was of little value to someone at the divine level. As Budwa had said, ascending from demigod to godhood wasn't about absorbing crystals, but about insight. Yet, how to break through, Budwa couldn't say. So, Chen Luo eagerly asked Isman how to advance from demigod level to divine level. Isman didn't hold back. Sufficient crystals can advance you to demigod level, but breaking through to divine level might be a moment's insight. The key is a profound understanding of your elemental abilities, like your spatial ability, spatial cut. Others might consume a hundred units of energy for one use. If you can do it with just one unit, that means you have divine level potential. 99% of demigods never break this barrier. Isman shook her head with a playful smile. I'm just saying, not to look down on you, but your chances of becoming divine level are slim. That's all I can tell you. You can leave now. After Chen Luo left, everyone asked what happened. Considering the incredible hearing abilities of a divine level being, Chen Luo knew he couldn't let his plans leak. So, he signaled them to stop asking. As Chen Luo walked into the yard, a figure swiftly flew past him from behind. The speed was so fast that Chen Luo barely saw it, making him wonder if it was just an illusion. Meanwhile, elsewhere, Zhao Zi was about to sleep with Jiang Chushue. Suddenly, a figure appeared behind Jiang Chushue, striking her head and killing her instantly. This frightened Zhao Zi immensely. Just as she was about to scream, the killer covered her mouth. If you don't want to die, control your emotions. Seeing this, Zhao Zi quickly sent a mental message to Chen Luo. Brother Chen, something terrible has happened. Sister Jiang Chushue has been killed by the woman you brought back today. Although Isman noticed Zhao Zi contacting someone, she didn't rush to leave. When Chen Luo arrived, he found Jiang Chushue dead on the ground, with Isman playing with Jiang Chushue's crystal. Immediately, Chen Luo closed Jiang Chushue's eyes to let her rest in peace, muttering to himself about the injustice. He could only wait to kill this person and then have Mi Li revive her. Chen Luo dared not show any anger, fearing that Isman might kill him too. He could only rage helplessly in his heart. Then, Isman smirked and said, You must be very angry now. I can't help it. Temporal crystals are so rare. I can only say, I'm sorry. But suddenly, she grabbed Chen Luo by the collar and said coldly, If Lord Rice learns about this, you know the consequences. Don't ruin my image in her heart. Lord Rice asked me to guide you, so I'll teach you another lesson. I've witnessed the destruction of my homeland, and you've seen your planets being suffer. Why did this happen? Because we were both weak. Only by being strong can we prevent such 
such things. I yearn for power and will stop at nothing. Dignity, pride, all nonsense. Only with great power can you control your destiny. Like you now, your life or death is at my whim. I don't want to kill you, and you live. That's the unchanging law. Survival of the fittest. Might makes right. Understand? This lesson is very precious. Chen Luo lowered his head, hiding the cold gleam in his eyes, and said weakly, understood. Upon hearing this, Isman warned him again. You must never let Lord Rice know about this. The space system, though special at a low level, becomes ordinary at the divine level. I advise you not to harbor any suicidal thoughts. After Isman left, Chen Luo sat on the doorstep quietly staring at the starry sky, thinking, although the time system has given Jiang Chushua enviable abilities, it has also brought her fatal trouble. It really is a case of no guilt in being a common man, but a crime in possessing a jade. The growth of the time system is too difficult. Once you use your abilities, you'll attract others' covetousness. If I didn't have the space system as cover, even Rice couldn't protect me. The next morning, Isman released a cool flying saucer. Rice watched it with shining eyes. After spending a day together, Isman found Rice to be playful and thus took out the aircraft to lure her into playing, intending to deceive and take Rice away early. If Rice agreed to board the aircraft, Chen Luo would never see her again. At that moment, a tremendous surge of space-time energy finally reached Blue Star, creating a huge energy vortex in the sky. Isman, puzzled, looked up at the sky. In the universe, she had seen common energy storms of wind, fire, ice, and thunder, but this was her first encounter with a space-time one. Chen Luo carefully felt the energy and found it identical to the energy used during his space-time summoning. He then realized, this is the opportunity Rice mentioned. If I can harness this immense power, I can use time reversal to take Isman back two and a half years to the moment she was most seriously injured. Then, the miracle of an emperor level defeating a divine level can occur. Chen Luo immediately used Void Walk to reach the center of the vortex. He felt a familiar sensation from these forces and thought to himself, time reversal requires precise coverage of the target person, so I need to immobilize her before charging up. Then, Chen Luo looked sternly at Isman and, with a loud shout of time stop, Isman instantly felt paralyzed. Seeing this, Chen Luo didn't dawdle and immediately condensed all the space-time energy into a giant sword that pierced the heavens. With a cold and merciless gaze, he swung the sword down, saying, go, time reversal. Following this, Isman's body underwent earth-shattering changes. A great amount of black energy emerged on her, frightening her immensely. She cried out in alarm, why is the curse Auburn placed on me before dying appearing on me again? Before Isman could understand what was happening, the Thunder King struck her with a purple thunderbolt. Chen Luo coldly said, strike while the enemy is weak. Everyone, attack together. Chen Luo watched from high above as the god, now resembling a dead dog, lay defeated. The space system is indeed ordinary, but where space falls short, time compensates. How does it feel? The taste of time reversal. At this moment, Isman finally realized, I never imagined this kid would be a master of space-time. I've been foolishly opposing space-time and fate. I deserve this death. After saying this, Isman died on the spot. Just then, Sea Princess, wielding a divine sword, rushed forward, furiously slashing at Isman while shouting, this is for bullying my brother. Chen Luo also remembered his promise to make Sea Princess younger. Previously powerless, he now had the ability. He hurriedly shouted, sister, are you ready? I've mastered time reversal reversal, and it's time to fulfill my promise. Hearing this, Sea Princess paused, then excitedly shouted, let's do it. I'm ready. Without hesitation, Chen Luo sprinkled a thread of temporal energy onto Sea Princess, thinking to himself, sister must be over a thousand years old. Since it's a rare opportunity, let's take her back to before she was a hundred. To Chen Luo's astonishment, Sea Princess's body suddenly began to shrink rapidly, leaving him dumbfounded. Why is she shrinking? She won't revert to her original form, will she? In the end, to everyone's amazement, Sea Princess turned into a seven or eight-year-old girl. Chen Luo was shocked. Why did this happen? I used such a small amount of power. However, Sea Princess happily hugged Chen Luo, murmuring, I knew my brother wouldn't deceive me. It's just a pity that my powers have also disappeared due to the reversal. I can't protect my brother anymore. Hearing this, Chen Luo quickly reassured her, Don't worry, sister. We have plenty of crystals. In at most half a year, I can bring you back to the peak of the emperor level. Hearing this, Sea Princess smiled brightly. Then from now on, I'll rely on you to protect me, brother. Just then, Rice suddenly shouted, I feel my power has grown stronger. This frightened Chen Luo, who thought to himself, Rice hasn't absorbed any crystals. Why would she suddenly advance? Could it be that Rice's growth is related to fate? For instance, witnessing others' fate. I just killed a divine level being with my emperor level strength and changed my own destiny. Rice witnessed it, so her power increased. It seems Isman really was a bringer of fortune. Thinking this, Chen Luo immediately extracted Isman's crystals and was surprised to find two crystals in Isman's head. One was a divine level crystal of the ice system and the other a demigod level crystal of the light system. Chen Luo found it puzzling. Why are there two crystals? I've taken crystals from dual system ability users before, but there was only one crystal. He then recalled Isman's words. When you have a great realization in one ability, you advance from demigod level to divine level. Isman must have reached
reached the pinnacle of understanding in the ice system, gaining the favor of the ice system's law and advancing to divine level, while the light system remained at demigod level. Hence, a dual system crystal split into two. He then found a black crystal on Isman, likely Auburn's divine level dark system crystal. Puzzled as to why she didn't store it in a space ring, Chen Luo tried to place the crystals into his own ability space, but found that the two divine level crystals, like living entities, couldn't be stored. At that moment, Mili shouted, I've resurrected Jiang Chushue. Sister Yu has prepared a big table of delicious food to celebrate. Come and join us. Everyone then raised their glasses, celebrating the end of the crisis. Chen Luo said with relief, it's finally all over. The worst we can expect now is some fodder from the Budwa family. We won't have to live in fear anymore. Rice glanced at Chen Luo. She had foreseen four major tribulations for him. The arrival of a monster, a visit by a demigod level to Blue Star, the appearance of a divine level, each more dangerous than the last, and the final one being the most difficult. Not wanting to ruin the mood, Rice decided to keep this ominous news to herself for now. After the celebration banquet, Chen Luo decided to go back to his room to improve his special ability space. He thought that the reason he couldn't keep living things in his space might be due to the absence of time. If he could integrate the power of time into his special ability space, maybe then he could keep living things in it. With this idea, Chen Luo immediately started experimenting. He applied the method of creating a time zone to his special ability space and quickly made a 2 cubic meter time zone. Then, he immediately took out two divine level crystals to try. This time, he successfully stored the two crystals in his special ability space. However, these weren't real living creatures. He needed to try with a small animal. But just then, Wan Jiangui's tantrum could be heard outside the door. Big brother, please betroth Xu Yun to me. She's bald now, and I don't mind. Wan Jiangui begged. Hearing this, Chen Luo was immediately furious. Xu Yun had become bald defending against an external enemy invasion. You, on the other hand, run faster than anyone at the sight of a monster. Do you think you're worthy of Xu Yun? And who said I can decide to betroth her? Wan Jiangui cried. Haven't I done a lot for you without asking for anything in return? Just betroth Xu Yun to me this once. Hearing this, Chen Luo's face darkened. He had intended to use a small chick for the experiment. Since Wan Jiangui was so ungrateful, he decided to use him instead. Chen Luo smirked and said, Wan Jiangui, why don't you do a favor for your big brother first? Although Wan Jiangui sensed something was wrong, he had no choice but to agree. The next second, a black hole appeared in front of him. Before he could react, Chen Luo kicked him into the special ability space. Wan Jiangui only felt darkness envelop him as he entered a gloomy space. Terrified, he shouted, Big brother, what are you doing? Let me out. I won't marry Xu Yun, okay? Chen Luo ignored him and observed Wan Jiangui's every move with his consciousness, thinking to himself, since he's shouting so loudly, there must be enough oxygen inside. Let's observe for a few days. If this experiment is successful, I can take everyone into the special ability space when in danger and use void walking to escape with the whole troop. Three days later, Chen Luo noticed that Wan Jiangui had stopped making noise. It wasn't due to a lack of oxygen, but because he was too hungry and weak after three days. So, Chen Luo quickly let Wan Jiangui out. Wan Jiangui was overjoyed and quickly shouted, Big brother, I know my mistake. I won't dare to do it again. Just as the words fell, a group of Xu Yun's admirers appeared before Wan Jiangui. Before he could understand the situation, the three of them beat him up without a word. Seeing that the special ability space could indeed sustain living beings for a long time, Chen Luo immediately started to make further improvements, muttering to himself that he should first expand it to 10,000 cubic meters. Although it's not needed now, it might come in handy someday. But at that moment, a loud rumbling sound suddenly came from outside Don City. Could it be the Budwa family sending people over again? Without further thought, Chen Luo immediately left the city to check, only to find the enchanting tree furiously approaching, shouting, Chen Luo, how dare you deceive me? You said to fend off the monster invasion. I advanced 200 fruits. You promised to compensate me after the battle, but you have not shown up till now. Hearing this, Chen Luo didn't hesitate and immediately took out 200 corpses from the special ability space, mumbling an apology for the delay. Now here's your food. Please enjoy. The first 200 fruits you bear from now on are yours. I, Chen Luo, am a man of my word. Upon hearing this, the enchanting tree began to devour the corpses frenziedly. Seeing this, Chen Luo smiled slightly, thinking to himself that since the tree did not possess emperor-level talent, it would no longer enjoy these fruits. He then came up with a plan. At the moment the enchanting tree was about to enjoy the fruits, Chen Luo used a time-stopping ability on the tree and quickly replaced the fruits with apples. When he released the enchanting tree from the time stop, it still sensed something was amiss. Why does this fruit taste different? Chen Luo started to blabber seriously. Perhaps the fruits born from these monsters as nutrients are different. I am a man of my word, you know. Meanwhile, on the other side, the Budwa family, having not heard from their clan leader for a while, tried to contact Barrow, but couldn't reach him. The three-eyed elder anxiously suggested, could there have been an accident during transmission? Another elder quickly reassured that it was unlikely, as the tunnel was personally made by Time Trace, and with Barrow's strength, even an accident wouldn't be fatal. Could he have encountered the ice-type divine level? This suggestion made the three
three-eyed elder proposed that they should seek Time Trace to inform him about the Time Crystal and ask for his help to save Barrow. However, the other elder disagreed, arguing that if Time Trace intervened, the Time Crystal might no longer be theirs. What if Barrow's inability to transmit messages was just an accident? But the three-eyed elder was adamant, Barrow is our clan's hope, he must not die. Otherwise, our Budwa family will face complete downfall. If I am wrong, I will bear all consequences. I will go to Time Trace now. Time Trace, at this moment, is waiting at home for news. He refuses no visitors, no matter who they are seeking an audience. All for the sake of Violet's prophecy. Time Trace had even spent a lot of money to hire three helpers, all of whom were at the divine level. As soon as he got news of his arch enemy, he would immediately take his people to annihilate him. Just then, an elf-like woman entered the Great Hall and respectfully said, Master, two elders of the Budwa family are outside asking for an audience. Hearing this, Time Trace immediately ordered a maid to bring the two up. Normally, Time Trace wouldn't have bothered with such small fry, but this time he agreed without hesitation, as it was a matter of life and death for him. Time Trace then took the two elders to a secret room, where they told them everything about the Time Series Crystal and the news of a Space Series genius who had mastered the Space Divine technique. Hearing this, Time Trace was shocked and muttered to himself that Violet had not deceived him. This person has even mastered Void Walking, truly a genius of the Space Series. But what of it? There are no resources for advancement on that desolate planet, so I must strangle him in the cradle. When Barrow went there, that guy was only at the Emperor level. By the time I get there, he'll be at most Sovereign level, with four Divine levels on my side. How could I fear a mere Sovereign level? It's just unfortunate that the Space Tunnel can't safely transport so many Divine levels. Driving a flying saucer, we can reach the Blue Star in at most two months. Thinking this, Time Trace quickly said he understood and promised great benefits to the Budwa family once the matter was resolved. Meanwhile, Rice informed Chen Luo about the fourth obstacle and that the person would personally come to the Blue Star to deal with him in two months. Chen Luo was so frightened that he shouted, What should I do? Rice told Chen Luo that they could only adapt as things unfold. Chen Luo then thought he must urgently improve the special ability space to ensure everyone's safety. So, he accelerated the pace of modifying the special ability space and soon created a 50,000 cubic meter space. An hour before Time Trace's arrival, Chen Luo gathered everyone and stuffed them into the special ability space. Rice then solemnly said, The divine armor is key to your survival. You must never take it off, or you'll certainly die. It's all up to you now. Hearing this, Chen Luo nodded and then sat down to quietly absorb the crystal. At this moment, Time Trace and his party had already arrived above the Blue Star. Snake Mother said gravely, Time Trace, you've hired three divine levels and more than a dozen demigod levels. You've made such a big move to this remote planet, so you should tell us the purpose of this trip now. Time Trace then shared Violet's prophecy and insisted that the person must die, so he had to strangle him in the cradle. But Snake Mother doubted this approach, questioning if Time Trace's actions today might be the very reason the person would become his enemy in the future. There's no such thing as baseless hatred. I think you could try to be friends with him. Time Trace immediately dismissed the idea, saying, Friends? What a laughable word. Are there ever any eternal friends in this universe? He's still weak now. For us, for divine levels and several demigod levels, killing him is easy. Why pretend to be friends? I choose to believe in Lady Violet. I won't be at peace until this potential threat is eliminated. There's no need for further discussion. Eradicate all life on this planet. Time Trace then commanded Snake Mother to quickly find this person, saying, I want to kill him in one strike without him knowing. Hearing this, Snake Mother nodded her head and immediately started scanning the life on Blue Star with her eyes, covering a large area. Different levels of life appeared as different colors in Snake Mother's eyes. Soon, a sovereign level fluctuation appeared in Snake Mother's view. Snake Mother then focused intently and saw a figure wearing purple armor sitting cross-legged on the ground. At this moment, Snake Mother said gravely, your plan to ambush might not work. That guy might only be sovereign level, but he's wearing Auburn's armor. Even if you are divine level, it's impossible to kill him instantly. Hearing this, Time Trace was shocked and exclaimed, is this kid crazy? Who wears armor all the time? Is he extremely afraid of death? I was planning to quietly use a spatial rift to instantly kill him once I found him. Now the plan is completely ruined, but it doesn't matter. He can't escape death anyway. I alone am enough to kill him. You guys help me guard the surroundings to prevent him from escaping. After saying this, Time Trace used Void Walking to approach Chen Luo and immediately executed a spatial lockdown to prevent him from escaping using Void Walking. At this moment, Chen Luo suddenly felt an immense pressure trying to crush him into meat paste. If not for the armor resisting this powerful force, he would have likely exploded already. Chen Luo was alarmed and immediately used Void Walking to leave his original position. Seeing this, Time Trace smiled slightly and clenched his hand again, causing the entire space to experience a void compression. Chen Luo, looking at Time Trace with uncertainty, thought to himself, is this person a divine level in space? If I can't beat him, can I still outrun him? Thinking this, Chen Luo immediately used Void Walking. However, with a bang, it was as if he hit something and was blocked by an unknown force within a region. In his previous life, he had encountered such a situation where the enemy 
enemy used a barrier to prevent his escape, eventually forcing him to improve his void walking to break through barriers. Since then, barriers were just a joke to Chen Luo. At this moment, Time Trace appeared next to Chen Luo using void walking and said, Take off your armor and give it to me, and I can spare your life. Seeing this, Chen Luo was greatly startled and thought to himself, This guy can also use void walking, better to run first. Saying this, Chen Luo swiftly escaped the spatial lockdown. This scared Time Trace quite a bit as he shouted, How is this possible? He actually broke through my spatial lockdown. This defies all logic. No one has ever been able to use void walking under spatial lockdown. How did he do it? Time Trace, with trembling hands and in a furious tone, shouted, I must kill you today. Do you think you can escape? You're still no match for me in endurance. A divine level ability is hundreds of times more powerful than a sovereign level one, not to mention the quality. Thinking of escaping from me? No way. In the sky, two figures were constantly flickering. Unknowingly, he had run into the area of the divine level Thunder Roar. Thunder Roar was frightened. He hadn't expected someone to escape from Time Trace's grasp. Thunder Roar thought to himself, wondering if Violet's prophecy would really come true. He immediately contacted Time Trace. That guy has run over here. Come quickly. Upon hearing this, Time Trace coldly said, quickly use your ultimate move. Make space collapse. I'll be right there. Soon after Time Trace arrived, he and Thunder Roar launched their ultimate moves, Space Annihilation and Thunder Roar Nine Heavens. Several purple lightning bolts violently struck down from the sky, creating a deafening roar and striking directly at the ground. The energy of the lightning rapidly spread out, turning everything it touched to ash. Meanwhile, the space around Chen Luo began to shatter, turning into black holes. Fortunately, Chen Luo was wearing divine armor, which protected him from most of the damage. He then used void walking to escape the attack range, thinking to himself how terrifying the power of divine level was. At the same time, due to the intense light from the lightning, Time Trace and Thunder Roar couldn't see the situation inside. Then, Time Trace said, under such a scale of space collapse, he can't use void walking. That guy has armor, so he shouldn't be dead yet, but he must be badly injured. However, when the dust settled, Chen Luo had already disappeared without a trace. Time Trace was infuriated and shouted, I don't believe he can use void walking indefinitely. Everyone, split up and search. This guy must die today. Suddenly, Snake Mother contacted them. Where are you two? I feel that he has escaped near me. Time Trace responded, How is that possible? Let alone using void walking during a space collapse. Even if he could, how could he have the strength to escape 5,000 kilometers away? Are you sure you sensed it right? Snake Mother, feeling questioned and displeased, said, I am divine level, and this is my racial talent. How could I be wrong? Stop talking nonsense. Do you still need my help to find him or not? Time Trace, full of anger, replied, Search. We must find him, or he'll be a continuous threat. Snake Mother with a gloomy face, regretting getting involved with the Time Trace task, bound to eliminate disaster for the pay, reluctantly reactivates her skill to find Chen Luo. Soon, she discovers the boy hiding at the bottom of the sea. Chen Luo, meditating there, thinks, Let them try to catch me. Will they catch me first, or will I advance to divine level? Suddenly feeling a sense of dread, he immediately uses void walking to leave his spot. Just after he leaves, a terrifying attack pierces through the seabed, frightening Chen Luo, who wonders how they found him. By scent or mark, can I avoid trouble if I can't confront it? After saying this, Chen Luo escapes to the moon using void walking. Meanwhile, Time Trace and others rush to the seabed to find Chen Luo's body, but find nothing. An exasperated Time Trace shouts, Can't that kid be killed? How can his void walking be so unreasonable? Under spatial collapse, isn't void walking unusable, or is it just me who can't use it? Seeing this, Time Trace urgently orders Snake Mother to locate the boy, but after two hours of thorough scanning, Snake Mother still can't find Chen Luo. There are only two possibilities. Either he's continuously using void walking to dodge her scan, or he's hiding in a space she can't detect. Thunder Roar speaks gravely. Your theories all require massive energy consumption. Just wait for his energy to run out, and he'll have nowhere to hide. Time Trace, silent for a moment, then speaks fiercely. No need for complications. Just destroy this planet. With that, he conjures a red energy ball, which expands to tens of meters high, with cosmic energy still converging towards him. Time Trace smirks sinisterly. I should have done this from the start. I was too soft-hearted. Too bad I won't see the kid's corpse. Snake Mother watches coldly, sensing an ominous feeling, thinking if the boy survives, he's destined to become a god. Meanwhile, Chen Luo on the moon notices this terrifying energy, panicking, wondering what those people are up to, and if something major is happening. Thinking this, he immediately uses Void Walking to return to Blue Star, only to see Time Trace preparing to destroy it. Without hesitation, Chen Luo appears and shouts, Stop! If you dare destroy my mother planet, I swear I'll make you pay. This infuriates Time Trace, who thought Chen Luo was hiding in deep space. He yells, questioning the limits of Chen Luo's Void Walking, and throws an energy ball at him, shouting for him to stop running. But Chen Luo easily dodges with clever movements. Although the attack misses him, the resulting explosion is dozens of times more terrifying than a nuclear bomb. To defend Blue Star, Chen Luo immediately starts to mock Time Trace, loudly taunting, Come chase me, idiot. He deliberately kept the distance close, wanting Time Trace to see but not catch him. Time Trace didn't use void walking, just relied on his own 
own speed to doggedly pursue Chen Luo. As time trace chased, his expression grew darker, thinking, this kid has void walked a million kilometers. Time trace quickly accelerated to his front, and just as he was about to catch him, Chen Luo used another void walk to timely dodge, only to be unexpectedly sucked into a black hole, then completely disappeared from time trace's sight. It wasn't his intention to enter it. The destination of his void walk just happened to be near this celestial body. Time trace, with twitching cheeks, stopped where Chen Luo disappeared, shouting, such a rare black devouring star, and this kid bumped into it. Entering the black devouring star meant he could be randomly teleported to a corner of the universe. Snake Mother and others who arrived later were surprised, never thought this kid would actually escape. Time Trace, purple with rage, roared, I can't accept this. If I can't catch him, I'll destroy his mother planet. Seeing this, Snake Mother immediately intervened. Enough, Time Trace, leave us a way out. Time Trace coldly looked at Snake Mother, asking what she meant. Upon hearing this, Snake Mother immediately said that we were seriously duped this time. That guy's prowess in traversing the void is evident to all. Plus, he has obtained the crystals of Auburn and Isman. In a few decades, he could become a god. Time Trace scoffed, questioning if void walking posed a lethal threat to divine level beings. Snake Mother retorted, Indeed, killing divine level like us, especially dual ability ones, is hard. But what if he harms our people and escapes? What can you do? I don't want to live in fear all my life. I must consider our people's future and not completely offend him. Others also agreed, suggesting it's wise to leave some room for maneuvering to meet again in the future. Snake Mother thought to herself, Violet predicted that Time Trace would die at his hands. It seems inevitable that he'll possess the power to slay gods, not just void walking. Chen Luo, not yet a god, frightened three divine level beings into submission. Time Trace trembled with anger at their words, thinking, truly, there are no friends in the face of interests. Time Trace mocked Snake Mother and the others for fearing a sovereign level being. It's really a shame for us at the divine level. Even if he can become a god by walking through the void, it doesn't mean we have no way to deal with him. The nemesis of void walking is time stopping. I just need to find someone with time abilities and train them to the demigod level to defeat him. Isn't there someone on Blue Star who has mastered time stopping? After I regroup, I'll return to Blue Star and find that person. After saying this, Time Trace released the spaceship, saying, We walk different paths, let's part ways here. Then he left Blue Star alone. Watching Time Trace's spaceship, Thunder Roar said helplessly, It seems we can no longer be friends. Hearing this, Snake Mother immediately expressed indifference, hoping only that the kid wouldn't trouble them in the future. Meanwhile, as Chen Luo entered Black Devouring Star, he felt dizzy and soon fell out of the mysterious celestial body. The armor on his body detached from him and disappeared into the cosmic dust. The armor had already cracked resisting Time Trace's attack and bore the pressure for him in the mysterious celestial body. Chen Luo, gasping heavily, thought to himself that he must find new armor for protection, suspecting that Blue Star was probably destroyed by now. Unaware of the identity of his adversary, Chen Luo only remembered their appearance and vowed to find them, especially targeting the space user. His priority was to find a planet to settle on. At this moment, Chen Luo found himself on a picturesque planet surrounded by lush vegetation and fresh air. Without hesitation, he decided to settle there. He released the members from his special ability space. Mili, immediately concerned, asked, Brother Chen Luo, are you alright? Chen Luo smiled and shook his head, then said sentimentally, our homeland is probably destroyed. Let's temporarily settle here. If this planet is safe, I'll stay here until I reach divine level. Just then, Red Lantern Fish suddenly jumped into the river, caught a half meter long blue fish, and presented it to Sea King. Although Chen Luo was touched by his filial piety, he was concerned about the fish's safety. Suddenly, a cat's scream came from the forest, startling Chen Luo, who instinctively looked towards Rice, only to find Rice happily playing by the river. Wondering who made the sound, he saw Thunder King approaching with a cat person, saying, Master, it was this one who made the sound. The cat person, frightened, meowed incessantly. This familiar language immediately caught Rice's attention, who thought to herself, Why can I understand its words? Am I a descendant of cat people? Seeing Rice approach, the cat person quickly hid behind her and began to communicate with Rice in the cat language. Rice then translated what she said to Chen Luo. She's very scared and wants me to take her home. Her people are nearby. Upon hearing this, Chen Luo immediately said, I'll go with you. I'm not at ease with you going alone. But just as he finished speaking, a large group of cat people suddenly surrounded them, all wearing hateful expressions and staring intently at Chen Luo and his companions. Seeing this, Rice quickly asked in confusion, Why do you hate us so much? Then, a cat-eared girl coldly said, Have you been brainwashed by them? They capture our people from time to time. How dare you ask why we hate you? Listening closely, Rice grew angrier the more she heard. She then shouted, Unforgivable! How dare they treat our cat people like this? From now on, you don't have to be afraid of them anymore. I'll protect you. Just as Chen Luo was about to ask Rice what was going on, a group of figures flew towards them, and the leader chattered on for a long time. Chen Luo didn't understand a word, and was about to ask Meng Yin to communicate with them telepathically when a lizard person suddenly used mind transmission first, saying, This is Lord 
Lord Kanmas territory. The cat people here are properties bred by Lord Kanmas. You are aliens, right? We've never seen you before. This is not a place for you. Lord Kanmas is a great demigod level being. After some conversation, they learned that this was a planet specifically for breeding cat people, who were either used for food or sold as pets, mostly for food. No wonder Rice was so angry earlier. The fate of the cat people was so tragic. Then Chen Luo said gravely, we just want to stay here temporarily. But they were refused by the lizard people, who said, this is not a place for you. If you don't want to die, leave quickly. Hearing this, Chen Luo expressionlessly said, I said we'd leave after a while. Did you not understand? With that, Chen Luo slapped the leader in the face, killing the lizard person instantly. He then coldly said, everyone, attack. Leave none alive. Upon his command, the members immediately rushed forward, swiftly killing all the lizard people. At this moment, the cat-eared girls finally realized that they were not with those bad people. Hearing this, Rice immediately affirmed, of course, as long as we're here, we'll never let them bully you again. We won't be leaving for the time being. Half a year passed in a blink of an eye. Besides eating and sleeping, Chen Luo spent his time in a five times accelerated time zone absorbing crystals. He finally felt a breakthrough coming. The crystal in his head started to shake violently and split into two independent crystals. The moment Chen Luo's space crystal advanced to demigod level, the law force hidden in the universe instantly came to his side. Chen Luo was involuntarily brought into the sky, receiving the baptism of the law. As the law revolved around him, specks of energy entered his body. Meanwhile, Rice, having witnessed Chen Luo's ascension to godhood, also experienced a breakthrough in strength. About half an hour later, Law finally finished transforming Chen Luo's body, signifying his entry into the divine level. However, the runes surrounding Chen Luo were somewhat peculiar, all resembling footprints. These were the marks of void walking, a law. But what Chen Luo didn't expect was that the completeness of Law was only at 85%. What? I've only grasped this much of void walking? Perhaps it will be perfect perfect when I can traverse the universe with a single thought. I need to focus on mastering the temporal aspect next, to achieve godhood in that realm too. At that moment, Chen Luo noticed that Rice also bore the law runes, despite not being at the divine level. Moreover, the runes on Rice kept changing colors, sometimes pink, sometimes dark red. Were they changing according to Rice's mood? Chen Luo had a mischievous thought. If I make Rice cry with a punch, will her runes turn black? As Chen Luo was lost in thought, Rice suddenly shouted angrily, the killer of the cat people is here. Chen Luo, you must slap him a hundred times. Naturally, Chen Luo wouldn't refuse Rice's request. He remarked that the timing was perfect for a practice fight, to familiarize himself with the power of the divine level. Saying so, Chen Luo used void walking to confront the intruder. This scared Kamas immensely. Who yelled, what do you want to do? But before he could finish, Chen Luo used another void banishment to send him back to Cat Star. Kamas wasted no time in sending a distress signal to his divine level big brother, Huang Yao. Lord Huang Yao, I've been caught by a newly promoted divine level. Please, you must save me. The big brother Kamas contacted contacted was Huang Yao, who once went to the Blue Star with Time Trace. Upon receiving the message, Huang Yao was momentarily stunned, then hurriedly replied, Don't panic, just mention my name. A new divine level should give me some face. If he doesn't, I'll teach him a lesson. I'll be there in ten minutes. Hearing this, Kan Mas felt reassured. He approached Chen Luo respectfully and said, Sir, I am at your service. If I have offended you in any way, I'll make a satisfactory apology. I am a subordinate of Lord Huang Yao. Could you please spare me this once for his sake? But before he could finish, a loud slap resounded across his face. At this moment, Chen Luo coldly said, it's useless to be anyone's lackey. If Rice said he's going to slap you a hundred times, then not one less. After the sound of slapping echoed, Chen Luo finally finished giving the hundred slaps entrusted by Rice. Although Canvas's face was swollen like a pig's head, he dared not show any resentment or even utter any harsh words like you'll wait and see. Chen Luo then casually asked, who is this Huang Yao you mentioned? I've never heard of him. Kan Mas immediately replied respectfully, Lord Huang Yao is a divine level of the earth element. He ascended to godhood over 30 thousand years ago. The implication was clear. Wang Yao had been a god for 30,000 years, and you, who have just become a god, dare to disrespect him. To this, Chen Luo just responded with an O, nonchalantly saying, well, there's no one I'm afraid to offend. He continued asking, do you know how many divine levels of the space element are there in the universe? I don't know the name of Time Trace, but with the identity of a space element divine level, it should be easy to find him. Just then, Wang Yao, like a yellow meteor, landed on Cat Star. This delighted Kan Mas, who thought to himself that he was finally saved. My big brother has arrived. Let's see how you die now. However, Huang Yao looked at Chen Luo with a gaze as if he had seen a ghost, thinking to himself, how could it be him? It's only been half a year, and he's already advanced to divine level. That's just too incredible. So, he immediately turned to run away, but then he stopped, thinking that it was impossible to escape in front of this young man. Instead of running, it might be better to clear things up and try to resolve their grudge. But the next second, countless dimensional blades piercing through heaven and earth struck towards him. What used to be a powerful move that required charging was now just a minor skill casually unleashed by Chen Luo. Seeing this, Wang Yao instinctively wanted to swing out an earth shield to block, but then he thought
thought, this attack can't hurt me. I can block it, but I won't. I'll let this young man vent his anger. Under Canvas's disbelieving gaze, Wang Yao kept screaming as he was bombarded by Chen Luo's dimensional blades. How is this possible? A newly promoted divine level youngster can overpower Lord Huang Yao, who ascended to godhood through his defense. Even Chen Luo himself was stunned. Am I really that strong? Huang Yao, in a tragic tone, said, Little brother, stop fighting. Let's talk this out. I'll tell you a piece of great news right now. It'll definitely satisfy you. Then Chen Luo coldly asked, Speak up. What's the good news? Apart from you, all those other people are dead? Huang Yao's mouth twitched. You really are vicious. Then he turned to Kan Mas and ordered, You go stand guard on the perimeter. Without my order, no one is allowed to approach. After Kan Mas left, Wang Yao took out a memory crystal. A video appeared on it. Time Trace wanted to destroy your home planet in a fit of powerless rage. But we three stopped him. A small asteroid was heading towards Blue Star. Snake Mother, Thunder Roar, and I, Wang Yao, joined forces to shatter it. Actually, one of us was enough, but all three of us acted to show sincerity. Chen Luo watched with wide eyes, muttering, Wasn't Blue Star destroyed by that space system? Did you protect my home planet? Hearing this, Wang Yao took the opportunity to say, At that time, Time Trace did want to destroy your home planet, but we three stopped him. We all felt that you, little brother, would achieve great things in the future and didn't want to make such an enemy. We risked our lives to protect Blue Star for you. Sure enough, we were right. In just half a year, little brother, you've advanced to the divine level. To make up for our previous mistake, we're willing to compensate. Chen Luo, trembling, said, Blue Star is still there. That's great. He looked at Huang Yao excitedly. If what you say is true, then we can wipe the slate clean between us. But that space system divine level must die. You just said his name is Time Trace, right? Huang Yao nodded in agreement, essentially betraying Time Trace. He didn't want to be this kind of person, but Chen Luo's displayed potential was too astonishing. Chen Luo continued to ask, What grudge? What grievance? Why did Time Trace want to exterminate me? Huang Yao was in a dilemma. He knew the reason clearly. It was all because of Violet's causality system prophecy. But he knew he couldn't tell Chen Luo, as that would mean offending Lady Violet, and those who offended her never ended well. He suggested that Chen Luo could only ask Time Trace for the answer, advising him not to dig too deep or seek to hold her accountable, as her abilities were beyond his comprehension. That's all I can tell you, he said. Seeing that Huang Yao didn't seem to be joking, Chen Luo didn't press further. Then he solemnly said, I've just entered divine level, and there's much I don't understand. Is there any realm above divine level? Huang Yao immediately clarified that there isn't. Divine level is already the highest level in this universe. He explained that the strength of a divine level is measured by how many laws they have acquired. However, having more laws doesn't necessarily mean they are stronger than those with fewer laws. It also depends on their completion rate of these laws. Little brother, what's your completion rate for your void walking law? The law must have hinted at it. Chen Luo responded that it's only 85%. Upon hearing this, Huang Yao was shocked and exclaimed, reaching 30% would be favored by the law, allowing a demigod level to advance to divine level. And you have reached 85%? The level of comprehension affects the degree to which the law remodels oneself. This means that a divine level who has comprehended two laws at 30% each would be inferior to you in strength. I suggest you enter deep space to comprehend further, where you can find various spatial energies. Mastering them, you will eventually understand various spatial laws. He then asked, is it possible to become a god with dual abilities? Huang Yao nodded and said, it's possible. The first awakened element is always more attuned to oneself. The second one is somewhat less so. Therefore, the earlier the second ability is awakened, the better, indicating higher talent. Chen Luo thought to himself that it matched his thoughts. Although awakening dual abilities earlier increases the demand for crystals, it's a worthwhile trade. He then inquired about how many laws Time Trace had comprehended. Huang Yao immediately answered that Time Trace had understood two laws, one for attack and the other for teleportation. Time Trace had become a divine level and wealthy through his expertise in spatial teleportation. During the Budwa family's invasion of Blue Star, they had paid him a large sum to build a spatial tunnel. Through amassed wealth, Time Trace had made many connections. Chen Luo scoffed, so he's just a transporter. Huang Yao lamented that spatial types could handle transportation, metal types could work on equipment, and natural types could deal with divine herbs, while their earth type was reduced to mere laborers, helping others with construction. When Time Trace approached him, Snake Mother, and Thunder Roar, he offered one million purple crystals for accompanying him to Blue Star, with an additional two million upon success. Chen Luo remembered Isman's space ring, which contained a few thousand purple crystals. It seemed they were really willing to pay a high price to deal with him. He quickly asked Huang Yao what one purple crystal could buy. Huang Yao thought for a moment and said that an ordinary cat-eared girl would be worth half a purple crystal, while a top-quality one could sell for 10,000. Huang Yao then turned serious and warned Chen Luo that, despite his powerful void-walking ability, it was not invulnerable. He knew of two methods to counter it, the time system's time freeze, and the psychic system's mental attacks. The former was almost unsolvable, while the latter wouldn't threaten his life, but could easily distract him. Once drawn into an illusion, getting hurt was inevitable. However, Chen Luo himself was of the time system, making time freeze essentially ineffective against him. Hearing
doing this. Chen Luo's expression darkened. Even the slightest threat to his life was a grave concern. He realized the need to acquire armor to counter mental attacks. Wang Yao then simply introduced him to the situation in the universe. In the universe, there are already several top divine level beings who have comprehended six laws. There are also two gods who have comprehended eight laws. Currently, the most special law is the causal law controlled by Violet. If you offend her, you will be punished by the unseen causality. Moreover, she can reincarnate after death. Chen Luo listened more and more and felt that her ability was a bit like Rice's. However, she is much weaker than Rice. If Rice wants you to be unlucky, you can't even avoid it. It's just a pity that Rice has not yet grown up. Little do they know that once Rice grows up, Violet will be nothing but trash in front of her. After Huang Yao finished introducing the situation in the universe, he didn't dawdle and immediately took out a purple crystal card and said, Young brother, this card contains three million purple crystals. You'll definitely need it since you're new here. Don't think it's too little. I've offended you before. Please don't take it to heart. Saying this, Huang Yao stuffed the purple crystal card into his pocket. If there's nothing else, I'll take my leave now. After sending off Wang Yao, Chen Luo found Rice and asked her what would be best to do next. Although he already knew the address of Time Trace, with his current strength, he couldn't kill him yet. Hearing this, Rice immediately said that fighting is not your strong suit, but running away, you are number one in this universe. With this remark, Chen Luo suddenly realized, right, then I'll set off now to look for suitable equipment on other planets. Your runes are very special, Rice. It's better not to let others see them. Hearing this, Rice immediately assured him, don't worry, I know what I'm doing. Sometimes showing the runes can avoid some trouble. Let's not talk about this now. Hurry up and take me to taste the food on various planets. Hearing this, Chen Luo didn't dawdle and immediately agreed. You go call the others, and we'll go to other planets to see. Then, Chen Luo wrapped his entire body with law and flew straight into the vast universe. Soon, Chen Luo arrived at a glittering golden planet. This is a ninth level civilized happy planet named Volsi, also a very famous shopping paradise. As long as you have money, you can enjoy everything in the universe here. Chen Luo and his companions were curious about everything like country bumpkins entering the city, and they started a shopping spree. Whatever they took a fancy to, they bought it. Then they arrived at the top floor cloud restaurant. At this time, Chen Luo boldly said, except for this and this, bring me one of every kind. This scared the waiter, who hurriedly shouted, are you sure you want to order so much? Chen Luo didn't pay attention and directly took out the purple crystal card to pay. The next second, everyone started a crazy eating mode, all exclaiming how delicious the food was, totally different from the food on their blue star. This meal alone cost 520,000 purple crystals. Firstly, the prices here were the most expensive in the entire universe, and secondly, this group of foodies could really eat. Seeing that they were big spenders, the waiter politely presented a stack of promotional posters, saying, Sir, with your status, you are eligible to attend tomorrow's private auction. You might be interested in checking it out. Chen Luo casually took the poster and glanced at it, his pupils suddenly narrowing. On the poster was a silver helmet, specifically designed to defend against psychic attacks, exactly the kind of equipment Chen Luo urgently needed. This helmet was only the third-ranked item. The second was a flying saucer, obviously very valuable, but Chen Luo wasn't too interested in it. The top-ranked item was a bright red fruit. Chen Luo flicked the poster and then asked the waiter if these items had already arrived. The waiter quickly replied that the auction was to be held the next day and the items would only be delivered to the site on the day itself. Chen Luo nodded, thinking that he could only take action tomorrow. The next morning, Chen Luo put Mi Li and others into his special ability space and then disguised himself as Yuri, a base member, and leisurely walked into the auction. The MC walked to the center of the stage and began introducing the auction items. The first item was a flower fairy from the Dora clan. With sovereign level strength, the Dora clan possessed the trait of eternal youth, and with her sovereign level strength, she could maintain her appearance for 2,000 years. The starting bid was 100,000 purple crystals. The MC assured that there was no need to worry about her betrayal as her clan members were under the control of the seller. If she dared to betray, she would become a criminal of her race. Hearing this, Chen Luo was expressionless, thinking to himself, is this the tragedy of the week? But there were too many pitiable people, and Chen Luo couldn't save them all. Eventually, the flower fairy was sold for 380,000 purple crystals. The second item caught Chen Luo's eye. It was a sovereign level sublimation grass, with a starting bit of 300,000 purple products. Consuming it would directly grant someone's sovereign level potential. Although it was useless for Chen Luo, Mayu had been stuck at level 8 and couldn't advance. Without a second thought, he bought the sovereign level sublimation grass for 650,000 purple crystals. The next three items were the highlights of the day. The first to be auctioned was the silver helmet, Chen Luo's main target. The MC announced that it was personally crafted by Master Norton, designed to counter psychic attacks, guaranteeing immunity from demigod level attacks and greatly reducing divine level psychic attacks. The starting bid was 8 million purple crystals. Hearing this, Chen Luo was shocked, wondering to himself if metalworking was so profitable. He had seen Wang Yu craft equipment. These metalworkers seemed to have a business with no cost. 
After a round of bidding, the helmet was quickly bid up to 12 million purple crystals. This scared Jin Luo quite a bit. To put it in perspective, a complete set of auburn armor was only worth 10 million. Therefore, he was determined to get this helmet. However, Jin Luo didn't place a bid. A sneer appeared at the corner of his mouth, and he thought to himself, spending money on a sublimation grass was already giving you enough face. Now, it's time for you to show me some respect. The next second, the lights in the auction house suddenly went out, followed by the backup lights instantly turning on. The whole venue was in darkness for only 0.01 seconds. The auctioneer, with an unchanged expression, smiled and announced, 12 million once. Any higher bids? Just then, out of the corner of his eye, the auctioneer seemed to notice something and suddenly shouted, where's the helmet? Chen Luo chuckled inwardly, thinking, a simple glass cover thinks it can stop me? Who do they underestimate? Soon after, a team of uniformed security guards walked towards the audience with serious expressions, but they found nothing. The surveillance cameras didn't capture any clues either. They couldn't understand how the helmet, which was inside a crystal cover could just vanish. This was the first time the organizers had encountered such a situation. Without any evidence, they naturally didn't dare to search the bodies of the VIP guests, as all the attendees were distinguished figures. The auctioneer then quickly reassured everyone, please remain calm, it's just a minor interruption. Please rest assured, the auction will continue. The next item for auction was a centerpiece, the vermilion fruit. Almost everyone present, including about 10 divine-level individuals, came for this fruit. To Chen Luo's surprise, this vermilion fruit turned out to be a living entity with a humanoid appearance. Consuming this fruit for the first time could increase one's lifespan by 10,000 years. Chen Luo's original purpose was only for the helmet, but seeing this treasure, he decided to take it along since he was already there. Considering his previous theft of the helmet, the organizers would definitely mark the vermilion fruit or use some other means. Getting caught didn't matter to him, as he was in the guise of Yuri at that time. Just as the auctioneer excitedly announced the last item for the day, to everyone's shock, the vermilion fruit mysteriously disappeared right before their eyes. An alarm sounded Sounded immediately, and a large number of guards entered the venue. Then, a little old man with a serious expression stepped onto the stage and shouted, Seal off the entire venue. The thief must still be inside. The vermilion fruit can't be stored in a spatial ring, so we ask our distinguished guests to cooperate. Don't worry, we won't search your spatial rings. Please understand. Soon, a guard approached Chen Luo and respectfully asked him to stand up and turn around. Chen Luo complied without hesitation and thought to himself, Just because others' spatial rings can't store living things doesn't mean mine can't. After a thorough search, the old man's mentality completely collapsed, because after turning this place upside down, they still haven't found the vermilion fruit. The other divine levels present also had mixed feelings, wondering how it was done. It's already incomprehensible that it was stolen under their noses, and now it's even been hidden away. At this moment, a divine level, unable to contain his anger, roared, for this vermilion fruit. I saved purple crystals frugally for 50,000 years, and even borrowed some from friends. Now my end is near. Without this vermilion fruit, I'm certain to die. I don't care. You must find another one for me. Hearing this, Chen Luo was shocked. His end is near, and he's a divine level of the lightning element. He saved purple crystals for 50,000 years. If not 50 million, then at least 30 million. Chen Luo immediately had an evil thought. If I kill this old man, not only can I get a large amount of purple crystals, but also obtain a divine level crystal. As for morality and ethics, Isman had already taught him a lesson before. In the universe, the strong are revered. One must be unscrupulous for power, dignity, pride, all nonsense. The essence of the universal law is plunder. Although Chen Luo can't defeat this divine level, he can use time acceleration against him. This move is useless against a normal divine level, but it's not a big problem for one whose end is near. At this time, the old man helplessly said, Malmer, be rational, we don't want this to happen either. Upon hearing this, Malmer became furious. Rational, it's not your end that's near. Of course you can afford to be indifferent here. Seeing this, the old man quickly tried to appease him. I fully understand your feelings, but even if you tear this place apart now, it's of no use. Why not try your luck elsewhere? Maybe you'll find another one. To come and save for your loss. We're willing to pay a hundred thousand in travel expenses. How about that? After Malmer snorted coldly, he took the compensation and left in anger. Chen Luo thought to himself, could this be a performance staged by the auction house for me to see? After all, a successful thief would certainly need to dispose of the stolen goods if not used personally, and this unwitting buyer is eagerly exposing himself. But whether it's a trap or not, I've taken the bait. I'm Yuri. Who do I fear? Malmer had just left when suddenly a paper note appeared in front of him. Instinctively, he picked it up and read, do you want of vermilion fruit? I happen to have one. If you're interested, come to the outskirts of the Charles Planet. Malmer was overjoyed upon reading this. He immediately sped towards Charles Planet. Soon, Malmer arrived at the agreed location. Seeing this, Chen Luo quickly approached to greet him, but Malmer, impatient, said, cut the crap. Where is the vermilion fruit? Chen Luo smiled slightly and responded, the vermilion fruit from the auction was indeed taken by me, but it's currently with a friend of mine who is on his way here. He'll arrive in three months. Malmer immediately threatened, if you dare play tricks or double-cross me, I'll risk my
my old life and explode to take you down with me. Chen Luo quickly assured him, saying they were just petty thieves and not bold enough for such actions. He thought to himself that the longer he could delay, the greater the chance of killing Malmer. Chen Luo then seriously offered, Vermilion fruit is a priceless treasure. How about selling it to you for 50 million purple crystals? Malmer frowned and retorted, This is stolen goods. You're not thinking of selling it at the original price, are you? 40 million purple crystals. Take it or leave it. I'll leave right away if you don't sell. Chen Luo quickly agreed to Malmer's offer, although his initial plan was to delay for a few months before taking action. Suddenly, Malmer took out a communicator and said, You come here too. If I get cheated, the purple crystals you lent me will be gone too. A familiar voice came from the other side, agreeing and saying he would arrive soon. Chen Luo watched coldly, recognizing the voice of Time Trace. Malmer then smiled and said, To prevent you from double crossing, it's not too much to call a friend over, right? Chen Luo immediately agreed, saying, Of course not. In that case, I will send you on your way right now. As soon as he finished speaking, Malmer shouted in anger, accusing Chen Luo of deceiving him, and summoned a purple lightning, striking at him with incredible speed. However, Chen Luo didn't confront it head on, but used a void walk to dodge the attack. Malmer was initially stunned, then coldly said, So what if you can void walk? Do you think you can escape my wrath like that? He then activated a skill that caused a spatial collapse, preventing the use of void walking, and launched an attack at Chen Luo. Chen Luo, however, was not alarmed, pleased, thinking to himself that Malmer's mastery of lightning power was similar to that of Thunder King. Now that Thunder King had reached demigod level, absorbing Malmer's law comprehension could definitely advance him to divine level. However, just as Malmer was about to hit Chen Luo, at the last moment, he once again used a void walk to dodge Malmer's powerful move. This scared Malmer considerably, who hastily exclaimed, Under these circumstances, you shouldn't be able to use void walk. Unwilling to give up, Malmer continued to attack Chen Luo several more times, but all were evaded. While infinitely using void walk, Chen Luo kept accelerating time on Malmer. Realizing something was wrong, Malmer thought, Why am I wasting my time here if I can't catch this kid? Better to hurry and find the vermilion fruit to extend my life. But as he tried to leave, with Chen Luo using void banishment, the next second Malmer found himself back in his original place, infuriating him. He shouted, I'm not even bothering with you anymore. What more do you want? Hearing this, Chen Luo smiled slightly. Of course, I want your life. He then immediately used time acceleration to drain Malmer's life. At this moment, Malmer also realized something was amiss. Suddenly, terrifying thunder and lightning burst out from his body, rapidly expanding in all directions. He wanted to use a massive attack to leave Chen Luo with no room to escape. Chen Luo, however, chose not to dodge, thinking, what if this guy takes the chance to escape and all is for naught? Although the attack seemed powerful, it was too dispersed to harm a divine level being. I'll take this attack, Chen Luo decided, and a spatial shield appeared around him, blocking all the lightning attacks. At this time, Malmer suddenly coughed, and his appearance aged rapidly. Seeing this, Chen Luo didn't hesitate and immediately accelerated time. A chill went through Malmer's heart, thinking, is my life coming to an end? He then roared in anger, are you going to let me go or not? If you don't let me leave, I'll self-destruct. Even though I can't kill you, you'll be severely injured. Hearing this, Chen Luo paused, thinking, this guy was already planning for life extension when he still had half of his lifespan left. He's extremely afraid of death. He's talking about a mutual destruction, but he's actually more cowardly than anyone. Chen Luo was sure Malmer wouldn't dare to self-destruct, so he desperately accelerated time on him. Malmer felt his life fading away, growing weaker and weaker. He yelled at Chen Luo, it's all your fault. If it weren't for you, I would have already obtained the vermilion fruit. You'll have to join me in death. However, as soon as he finished speaking, Malmer realized he no longer had the strength to self-destruct. In a panic, Malmer quickly pulled out a purple crystal card and tried to destroy it with all his might. The event happened so suddenly that by the time Chen Luo used Void Walk to snatch the purple crystal card, it was already ruined. Malmer laughed wildly, saying, all your schemes are in vain. This card is already destroyed. You won't get a single purple crystal from it. He laughed and coughed simultaneously, but soon his laughter stopped abruptly. To his disbelief, the destroyed purple crystal card became intact again. Chen Luo looked at Malmer as if he were a fool, muttering, did you think I could only accelerate time? It shouldn't be surprising that I can reverse time. You're still too naive to play mind games with me. As soon as the words were spoken, Malmer collapsed directly onto the ground. Chen Luo then took out his divine level lightning crystal. After a moment of contemplation, he figured that time trace would arrive soon. He wondered whether to wait for him, but quickly dismissed the thought, realizing that even if time trace came, he couldn't kill him, only provoking relentless pursuit. Deciding to let him live a bit longer, Chen Luo immediately left the area. However, no sooner had he left than time trace arrived at the planet. Seeing the remnants of battle, time trace called out Malmer's name several times to no answer, worrying that Malmer, who had mentioned making a deal here, might have been double-crossed. Regretting the 10 million purple crystals he had lent Malmer, Chen Luo planned to purify the blue star and soon arrived at a bustling planet near it. He entered a shop specializing in natural items, filled with various spiritual herbs, woods, and liquids, perfect for purifying
identifying the blue star, he began an extravagant shopping spree, buying everything appealing, including star trees with purification abilities, shrimp for water purification, and the succulent pig louse beast, ordering a hundred tons of each. This shocked the shopkeeper. You're not joking, are you? Hearing this, Chen Luo's eyes widened. Can I buy this much? The shop owner quickly responded with a smile. No, no, it's just that the amount you want is quite large. It might take a little while. Where is your spaceship parked? I'll arrange for someone to help you load it directly. Upon hearing this, Chen Luo suddenly realized something. Although he can store living beings in his special ability space, he must never reveal it in front of others. He remembered that when he killed Isman, he found a spaceship in her space ring, but he was unable to open it. It seemed to require fingerprint or facial recognition for access. Then, he handed the card to the boss, indicating that he should start preparing. In this universe, Chen Luo only knew Huang Yao well, so, he immediately contacted Huang Yao and asked if he knew someone who could modify spaceships. Hearing this, Huang Yao quickly responded that he did know someone, but the modification cost was a bit expensive, probably around 3 million purple crystals. Upon hearing this, Chen Luo smiled slightly. It's just a small sum. Also, do you know anyone well-versed in the light-type divine level, especially those skilled in purification? You know the situation in my hometown. I need someone to help with the purification. Money is no issue. I'm willing to offer 5 million. If that's not enough, I can add more. Hearing this, Wang Yao was shocked and thought to himself, just now it was 3 million, now it's 5 million. Brother, where are you making all this money? He quickly said that he would handle this matter and inform Chen Luo once he found someone. At this moment, the boss said that everything Chen Luo had ordered was ready. He noted that the spaceship seemed too small to carry everything and asked if Chen Luo needed him to contact an interstellar transporter. Chen Luo immediately responded that he would appreciate the boss's help and asked for a competent one, stating that money was not an issue. Hearing this, the boss didn't hesitate and immediately contacted the most famous interstellar transporter in the area. Then, the boss introduced him, saying, This is Lord Seth, the proud disciple of Lord Time Trace. Hearing this, Chen Luo was stunned. What? Time Trace's disciple? This is truly a narrow road for enemies. Then don't blame me for being ruthless. But outwardly, he kindly asked, How much would it cost to transport a hundred thousand pig lizard beasts to Cat Star? Seth quickly made an estimate and replied that transporting a hundred thousand pig lizard beasts would require ten trips, each costing fifty thousand purple crystals. Upon hearing this, the boss was shocked and thought to himself, ripping off customers isn't done like this, is it? You're really asking for a lion's share, aren't you? Chen Luo wasn't foolish either. These beasts are worth just tens of thousands of purple crystals, and you're asking for a transportation fee of 500,000? Setting up a space tunnel takes at most three days. You, a demigod level, earning 500,000 purple crystals in three days. Is there any justice? Any law? You're not helping me transport Zhuliang beasts. You're slaughtering me like one. Seth had heard that this guy was a big spender, so he planned to fleece him. But what he never expected was that Chen Luo, without even bargaining, just paid with his card. Indeed, as the boss said, this guy really was a fool with too much money. Chen Luo thought to himself, you can earn all you want, but you need to be alive to spend it. I must teach this guy a lesson. Then Seth started building the space tunnel, while Chen Luo asked him about the precision of his deliveries. How can you ensure that these items will be delivered to Cat Star? Seeing Chen Luo settle the bill so readily, Seth didn't hold back and explained, in our line of work, first, you need to be familiar with the universe's coordinates. Then, you build the space tunnel according to the coordinates direction and distance. At this, Chen Luo suddenly understood. He didn't know how to transport back to Blue Star before because he was unclear about its exact location. Fortunately, Wang Yao had taught him how to read interstellar coordinates. Chen Luo felt something at that moment. Although the power of space transportation was different from void walking, the two were quite similar. It was impossible to complete ultra-long distance transportation solely with his own abilities. He had to utilize the power of space itself. Just then, Seth said he had already transported 10,000 beasts. My ability has been drained. I need to rest before continuing. Upon hearing this, Chen Luo indifferently said, Step aside. I'll do it myself. Seth was stunned. What do you mean? Chen Luo closed his eyes, and a space tunnel formed in his hands, frightening Seth. This guy is actually in the same business. Before Seth could understand the situation, Chen Luo had already built a tunnel to Blue Star. This scared the boss quite a bit. He immediately shouted, You can do this too. Seth, with a gloomy face, said, Professional work should be left to professionals. Space transportation isn't as simple as you think. Hearing this, Chen Luo gave him a look and then coldly said, Are you teaching me how to do my job? Hearing this, Seth quickly said he didn't dare to do so. What I mean is, even if you build it yourself, the money can't be refunded. That's my rule. Upon hearing this, Chen Luo immediately retorted, You, a demigod level, are talking to me about rules, choosing money over your life? Surprisingly, Seth remained calm in the face of the threat, stating that violence was strictly forbidden on this planet, and that it was guarded by two divine level beings. You can't scare me. Besides, I am a proud disciple of Time Trace. You can't mock me like this. If you don't need me to build the space tunnel, then I'll leave. Chen Luo slightly smiled upon
upon hearing this and said, Today, I'll give Time Trace some respect and not trouble you. Get lost. Seth's eyes flickered with a hint of triumph as he pretended to leave respectfully, thinking to himself that there was no way he would refund the money. Just then, the sky suddenly lit up with endless colorful rays. That's right, the second law is here. Chen Luo mumbled to himself, looking up at the sky in bewilderment. I was just trying casually. How did the law come so easily? But I like it. Come on, baptize me with all your might. At this moment, all beings on the planet watched the sky enviously. The radiance also attracted the attention of the two divine level beings guarding the planet, Richard of the Fire Element and Sentai of the Wind Element. They initially thought Seth had ascended a godhood and quickly flew towards the light. Upon arrival, they realized it was not Seth who had become a god. Sentai closely examined Chen Luo's law runes and exclaimed, he actually comprehended the space transport law. It's exactly like the runes I've seen on Time Trace. This made both divine level beings envious. Another god is about to be born. However, Chen Luo appeared frustrated as his mastery over the space transport was only at 33%, far below his 85% mastery of void walking. Seth, arriving later, was in disbelief. How is this possible? He just learned space transport, and now he's comprehended the law. What about my thousand years of meticulous study? He felt utterly humiliated. Thinking this, Seth's expression darkened as he took out his communication tool and immediately contacted Time Trace. Master, there's trouble. Someone is competing with your business. He has mastered the space transport law just like you. Time Trace was shocked upon hearing this and demanded to know who it was. When Seth transmitted the scene, Time Trace was frightened. This is impossible. How can it be this young man? Wasn't he only strong in void walking? How did he ascend a godhood with space transport? Upon closer inspection, he realized that Chen Luo was enveloped in two laws, indicating that he had already become a god before, and like him, he was a god of two laws. 